Hey guys, it is sad to say this, but it is the closing session. One more time, Josiah and Micah Keneally just coming at you from the virtual Young Adults Today conference. Will you tell us one last time, I have YouTube pulled up. Can you just type into the chat, type into the comments if you've enjoyed this, if you've had fun, mm -hmm. maybe a highlight from last night, from this morning. There is so many takeaways. Truly, even I wanted to take notes while we were hearing from some of our speakers. So that's a good thing, I think. <laughs> and what we will try to do, we did not announce this, but we are doing our best to get all of the edited content mm -hmm. up to you and make it available for free for those who've attended the conference, for the teams. Maybe you missed a session. Maybe you wished you could be in two places at once. Right. We're going to work. Um, give us a couple weeks, but we're going to work to have that to you shortly. That's right. It's going to be great. And... As we just wrap things up, we have a few announcements that we'll close with, but before we do, we just wanna talk about three things. Mm -hmm. The first is we wanna talk about casting vision. The second is we wanna talk about leading teams, something that we're all called to. And then the last thing is leading together. And to just kick us off with casting vision, I think it's really important that I'll just start this, this is off script, but I just believe this firmly that with all my heart, I believe that the lead pastor, the senior pastor of the church is the vision carrier, the vision bearer, the visionary. And God can use you to be an under shepherd, under the, the shepherd who's Jesus and under a shepherd of a local church pastor. So you don't need to come up with the vision. If you're leading a Chi Alpha or a crew or intervarsity or a mm -hmm. campus ministry, it's a little bit different where you might have more visionary components. But when we talk about casting vision, even if you didn't create the vision, all vision is given by God. Mm -hmm. Acts 2, Joel 2. All visions are given by God, all dreams are given by God, but the pastor of your church is the visionary, but you can be a vision carrier. You can carry the name of the vision and extend the vision of your senior leader into this next generation. We talk about reaching the next and preparing the way. And there's five things from the book, Reaching the Next, the final chapter 13, um, with David Marvin who leads the porch very influential young adult ministry in Dallas, Texas. And he has five things that we just want to, with credit to him, mm -hmm. we just want to highlight these five things. Mike and I are going to tag team this, but right. will you just kick us off thoughts about vision casting? Well, I'll just say vision casting as a whole. If, if your people that you're leading don't know where you're going, how are they going to be able to follow? I've worked with nothing but incredible leaders, but I've also said, Pastor so-and-so, I'm like, but where are we going? So even if you're on staff and you don't know the vision, it's okay to ask your totally. team, your That's lead really pastor, good. or even if you need feedback from your team that you're leading, say, hey, what's our vision? And if they don't know the vision that they've been serving under, it's probably because we haven't been very good leaders to be able to cast that. So David Marvin did an awesome job of just expounding on five of those. So the first one, if you want to take notes or if you have your book handy, highlight, do whatever you need to do. The first thing is cast vision convincingly. Knowing that God, if he said it, he will do it. If Amen. he's called you and if you've been in the prayer room, you will be able to walk in the confidence yep. that he has yep. for you as a leader. And people are attracted to that. If they know that you're going somewhere, they want to hop on board because they don't want to miss out. So that's number one. I said it this way that we can't take people where we haven't been ourselves. And if you don't believe it, there's no chance that they're going to believe it. Just because mm -hmm. you said something, the convincingly part of what she just said is, do you believe it? Does it make you cry? Does it keep you up late at mm -hmm. night or wake you up out of bed in the morning? And the second one is similar. She talked about it, but casting vision consistently. Right. Having one message every year about vision is not enough. Like we right. need to bring it into our mm -hmm. life groups, into our small groups, into our Bible studies, mm -hmm. into announcements and embodying the vision. And I think that it's so important to refresh because Andy Stanley says it this way. He said, he taught me this, that vision leaks. Mm -hmm. And so we need to cast vision consistently, repeatedly, find new ways to illustrate the same thing. Yeah, so it leads us to the third one. Once you understand the vision that God has for you and you're able to share that with your group, celebrate the vision being lived out. I mean, Stories. Yeah, 
um, sh sharing your stories, sharing testimonies, and knowing that sometimes those visions change. Sometimes you have to pivot or you have new people entering your ministry. That's why it's important to consistently share what God is doing and share the direction that you're going, and that'll only strengthen your ministry as a whole. Yeah, I think um, the fourth one, it, it, David just says, communicate vision personally. And I think like as vision bearers and carriers of the name of Jesus and the vision and mission of our local churches, mm -hmm. what's really important is to personally embody it. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard it said this way, that nobody can tell your story better than you. Right. And we need to embody it personally, share it personally, allow others to share their stories of mm -hmm. what God's doing, celebrate it, but communicating it on a personal level and your story matters. People want to know about you and what God's doing in your life. Not eight years ago, but right. eight minutes ago, eight hours ago, eight days ago, even eight weeks ago is good. <laughs> Once we reach past like eight months, I mean, what's God doing recently? Yeah. And we look back for his faithfulness 100%. We want to remember those things, but we want to have a fresh download of personal vision. Absolutely. And the last and final one that he discusses is cast vision heroically. And the amazing thing is if you're a leader that's confident in who you are and who God's created you to be, you'll be able to cast vision, but also hand over responsibilities, empower those people around you. So the best way to do it is one, God is obviously our hero, but if you make that's somebody good. else the hero of their own story, sharing a testimony, hearing that, it's decisions that they've made in their life, good, bad, and ugly, that are going to, you know, help them become more heroic. So if you can get them to that point of you casting vision, them being the hero of the story, aside from God, that they took a leap of faith, they said yes, they got water baptized, they're now being mentored. If they're seeking out those next steps in life, pat them on the back, encourage them, and just come alongside them and just continue to love them where they're at. We never know what one word of encouragement, mm -hmm. one smile, one pat on the back, um, where it's appropriate with social distancing for the timeliness of this message. But, you know, I think that that's so important as people mm -hmm. are longing for encouragement, support, and as pastors and spiritual leaders, right. we get to do that. And the second subject that we're just going to lean into for a few minutes is leading teams. It's something that I've been praying over each of your names registered, over each of your teams registered. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that God's burdened my heart to pray for is that God's given you each a dream. Mm -hmm. And so I've prayed that each of you would be surrounded with a team to see that dream right. go from idea to implementation. And mm -hmm. as we talk about leading teams, I think it starts by the who. It's all about right. Jesus. We then start with why, like Simon Sinek says, of casting vision. Why do we do what we do? Not just what do we do, but who is it? It's all about Jesus and his glory and his name and his fame and renown. Then it's the who's, who else is involved as a mm -hmm. we. And then we talk about why, starting with why, helping people understand the mission, vision, and values, mm -hmm. and then getting into the specifics. But I pray that the Lord would mm -hmm. illuminate a few people, even during this talk, that you need to pick up the phone and call or text or send a DM. Hey, would you be open to meeting in our office? Would mm -hmm. you be open to grabbing Starbucks or Chick-fil-A? Right. Praise the Lord, anybody. <laughs> and just having a meal, having a, a group meeting where you invite people in to give ministry away. That's what we're talking about with leading teams. And we've come so up true. with a few challenges that we've faced right. that we want to just share. These are not hacks or necessarily, but we hope that you can learn from our mistakes and failures in the process of just five challenges that we faced leading young adult ministry and campus ministry that you might face as well that maybe they can help right. teach you. Well, the amazing thing is that we look at challenge doesn't always mean something negative. It doesn't mean that you're walking through this, you know, crazy transition or these crazy things. A challenge could be Maybe it's allowing you to be a stronger, a sharper leader, a more in tune with the spirit leader. So we take a challenge um, graciously, we're like, okay, Lord, what do you want to teach me and what what can I get out of this and yeah. how can I benefit others? So if you approach any challenge you're coming up against in it's that regard, it's an opportunity to grow and just become more in tune with God and kind of see what he does. But the first challenge that we've faced um, personally is it seems like 
young adults want a personal pastor, meaning they may not go to your church, they may only come to your Bible study, or they may only come to your special event that you're hosting once a month, um, maybe quarterly, quarterly yeah. maybe twice a year, but they, if they have your phone number, and if they know where you live, they're potentially gonna reach out and show up, and they want to be mentored, and they want that eyeball to eyeball conversation to take place. So it's definitely challenging if you're a multi-site you know, leader and you are leading hundreds of young adults, you can't necessarily meet with 200 young adults on a regular basis. So learning how to leverage the influence God is giving you and getting those people who are seeking personal pastors yeah. in the same room has just been extremely challenging in a good way. So I'll just share briefly, Josiah, Please. one story. He had like six or seven guys pulling at him in his time. He's like, Micah, I don't have seven hours a week, let alone every two weeks to meet and mentor these people. And I said, hey, why don't you invite them over to the house? I'll get out of your way and you can mentor them and speak to whatever challenges like they've been you know, approaching you with. And then with that, we've seen, though they didn't want to leave. They were there for what, three, four hours? It was a few hours because if you think <laughs> about it, I have a few hours, especially when it's, it almost became like a small group and right. we had coffee, bagels. It was really a great time and that was helping me as a leader leverage my time better because people do want a personal pastor and that's a challenge with time. Right. And it's a challenge to know who is God asking mm -hmm. us to invest in, especially with the confusion of, okay, if you're going over here for your worship and your small group's there, but you want me to be your personal pastor, that's the challenge of, as Brent Silkey says, a spiritually nomadic generation. Right. But that's one of the things that's helped is if, if you can all come to, come to me and, and we'll be there. I'm and come to, together and, yes, and learn from exactly. each other at the same stage and age of life seems to be very beneficial for, for men and women alike. So. Amazing. The second thing is, and I kind of touched on it, the mm -hmm. transient nature of the next generation. And this is not like um, a bad thing. It's actually beautiful. I talked with a pastor mm -hmm. of, he leads a multi-site church here in Minneapolis. And he mm -hmm. says his entire congregation turns over every three years. It's mostly young adults. And I was like, wow, as a college pastor, <laughs> nobody understands my context for ministry better than you. And it was really insightful. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Josiah, what I found is it takes somebody six weeks who's a young professional, downtown Minneapolis, to think, I wanna see if there's any job openings in Oregon. From thought idea to implementation move, it takes people on average six weeks right. in his experience. And I think that that's something that we all, like I wish selfishly that we were all in this together forever. And in a way we are, it's called Jesus. <laughs> but in the local expressions of our community, it can be a tremendously discouraging thing for me to see people you pour your life into lead for a season and then leave. And really looking at your ministry as not collecting crowds, but to dispatch disciples has been a game changer. Because what's our call? It's not to collect crowds. Right. Our mandate by mm -hmm. Jesus is actually to dispatch disciples. Mm -hmm. And I think that if, if we shift our framework and look at a challenge of, hey, you might have a leader for six months, what can you impart to them? Mm -hmm. What can God do as like the fundamentals? Right. What are the non-negotiables that we need to invest in in part? And then as they launch, we look at ourselves as a nexus launching path that we're not collecting crowds, we're dispatching the we get to bless and send them in that process. Amen. That's so good. The third thing is understanding the resources and you know, a lot of us are under-resourced potentially. Totally. I remember being with Josiah, he touched on this, Barnes & Noble walking up and down the, the shelves and looking at everything. He's like, there is hardly anything here for young adults, if anything. Yep. So just being under-resourced can feel as a disadvantage. But yep. I look at it as an opportunity. God has given you a white canvas. You have yep. an opportunity to get in the prayer room, to, to creatively dream and to think, Okay, if I, Jim Stovall challenged us with this question. He's yes. also on the podcast. He is incredible. But he said, if you knew you were awesome, what would you do? And I'm like, that is a very good question. So we want to challenge you with that same question that he Amen. challenged us with. If you knew you were awesome, what would you do? And what would you create in a perfect world? What would your ministry look like? And begin to pray into that. Get a list of people and to know that there are books, there are podcasts, there are resources. I'm not saying that you will agree with everything that we say or that they say, but you know what? If, if it aligns with truth and aligns with the word of God, that is a great opportunity for that resource to be on your shelf or on your playlist. So digging deep, and here's the thing, 
If not you, then who? Maybe God's calling you to to start being a resource, to start a ministry, to start a Bible study in your home, and to get real with God and get in the prayer closet and say, okay, Lord, here I am. Send me. Here I am. Use me. What will you have me do? And it's amazing to see how God shows up in the midst of our despair when we are waking up in the middle of the night and we are broken and we our heart breaks or what breaks his. So that's amazing. And <laughs> The fourth challenge that we wrote down in our notes is just stewarding a growing ministry. Right. And if you, go, I, I remember our ministry when we started at Cedar Valley Church with young adults, there was a prayer room and we met with four people for four weeks. And we prayed, it was all birthed in prayer to a previous point, and we prayed, God, who are you asking us to invite? Mm-hmm. And the next six weeks, 18 people showed up. 30 people showed up and we had to switch houses because you'd (laughs) open the front door and my favorite sight to see is shoes in the entryway and you just couldn't get in and you ran out of parking and those are good problems Mm -hmm. but they're challenges and if you grow from 5 to 10 it's like okay from 10 to 15 from 15 to 30 all of a sudden leading in a living room is different than Leading in a lounge. Right. Leading in a lounge is different than leading in a larger auditorium. So thinking about what can we do around tables mm-hmm. or around circles or around small groups that we can't do on stages. Mm-hmm. And what can we do from stages that we can't do around small groups? That's what Matthew Hernandez at Gateway Young Adults mm-hmm. and I talked about. And I thought that was a helpful framework. Yeah, and as your ministry grows, it's important to realize the importance that when you do have those moments, it's not dividing. Francis Chan wrote a book called Multiply. It's an opportunity for you to multiply. Yep. So if there's 30, you know, people meeting in a small group, boom, that becomes two. That can become three. That can become, you know, six people to a group or whatever that is. So a great opportunity. And the last one, what do you have to no, say? No, in our verbiage, what Mike is saying is we don't ever use the word subtract. Right. We use the word send. Right. We don't use the word divide. We use multiply. We we right. th- the kingdom of God is addition, multiplication, right. expansion. So yeah, that's so good to clarify. And the fifth thing that we've come up against is more or less who will lead us. And one with prime us. with us, yeah, yeah. And one prime thing that we've done is recognizing when we were doing young adult ministry um, on staff at a church, but also in the world that we're in right now with Chi Alpha, it's 18 to 30 year olds. Mm -hmm. And to recognize they are in very, very different seasons of life. College students, career, couples. Married, not married, engaged. You know, like so much life life happens in those 12 years that Josiah came to me, he's like, Micah, I, I don't know how to do this. Like there's a problem. How? How can we involve the 25 plus people so we don't lose them and still engage with the 18 to 24 year old? And I said, Josiah. This changed everything for our leadership yeah. structure. So we kind of demonstrated this a little bit at Evangel with Josh Shaldahl. And mm-hmm. I'm just kind of praying into the process like, okay, what insight do I have? And what have I seen work well? So we took the 25 to 30 year olds who, you know, young women, they're going to be transitioning into the women's ministry, men to men's. So we always want to make that handoff smooth. So one thing that we did, we got involved with the men's ministry and the women's ministry. If you're 25 plus and you want to come check out the Bible study that they're doing, awesome. Let's team up. But what we did with them, taking the 25 to 30 year olds and saying, hey, Will you mentor? Will you come alongside the people who are just entering into adulting? The 18 to 24 year olds, you've experienced um, the transition out of a house. You've experienced first time you've ever rented a place. Right. You've experienced college life. Would you be willing to impart your experiences, your wisdom, your knowledge into the group below you? So it was never divided. We came together and like, how can we engage both I don't want to say groups of people, but feeling that separation after you graduate and you land that first job, you're like, ah, 18. And you're 18, you're like, 30, you are ancient. So how do we how do we be truly God's people in that process? And that radically changed. Yeah. And we saw it explode. I mean, we went from like mm-hmm. 100 at an event to over 200 mm-hmm. just because we started praying differently and started leading differently. So that's something that we did. I'm not saying that even you define young adults as 18 to 30 year olds, but consider who's on your team, who's willing to serve and to what capacity are they able to get involved with? So great challenging thoughts. It's amazing. (laughs) I just want to camp for about a minute or two on the idea of leading together. We'll have to do a podcast episode about this because we're running out of time. But Micah, our heart and philosophy mm-hmm. of leading together is you're a she, mm-hmm. I'm a he, and together we're a we. Right. And so last weekend, Mike is at a conference, 
and I had no role in it. So I'm at home blessing and sending mm -hmm. her and I'm dad and I'm just holding mm -hmm. down the home base and we get to bless and send mom mm -hmm. or wife and that's just amazing and and there's been moments where she's done maybe things that were seemingly more mundane as Chris and Holly Brown taught us where mm -hmm. she then sent me to do things that were maybe more visible and and we just champion each other we sing each other's praises mm -hmm. we encourage mm -hmm. each other in the process what else would you say in response to leading together before we kind of move on from this topic i think it's always fun to recognize that there's if you desire to be married that god Amen. does not give dreams to tease us right it's if good. it's a dream of yours and a passion of yours to meet that someone make sure they're the right one number one two do not settle three start praying now and becoming the person you need to become andy stanley would say that so when you do come across that guy or gal you're like yes that's the one they're seeking the lord god is number one in their life and with that when you come together when christ is the center of your marriage when he's the center of your ministry if you desire to lead someday together there's a he a she and a we and to be able to bless and send to love and encourage and to pray for and pray over that's each amazing. other is significant so i just want to share if you guys listening you gals listening if that is a desire of your heart you need to work on you now and just be working on your spiritual life your emotional relational all those different components of who you are will bleed into your potential marriage or your future marriage and to be able to lead strong together you need to know who you are and whose you are above all else and who you serve and who god's called you to be so when you do link arms in ministry and in life it just feels natural and you don't have to do life together. You get to do life together, and you've chosen each other. So I just want to encourage anybody who's listening. I don't know if that's for one person or multiple people, but know that we've been praying for you. And Josiah, do you want to do the charge right now just so we can wrap I'd, things up? And I'd just love to. Before we do the them. charge, my, our last announcements. Ooh, I forgot the last you announcement. Just really, we want to let you in <laughs> on our life on the ministry that we're linked together and a part of with Young Adults Today. And mm -hmm. some exciting news is we would just love to shake your hand um, give you a high five, a handshake, a hug, and welcome you to Minneapolis, Minnesota, March 4th and 5th, 2022. Mm -hmm. A lot of the details will be underway and announced, but you can visit youngadults.today slash conference, and our team behind the scenes has already got registration up and running. And in fact, there's an early bird discount where the price is half price. For an individual, it's mm -hmm. only $50, and for a team uh, of you know, a team is um, 120, and that's going to be half price um, until March 14th. Mm -hmm. So, if you need to talk to your pastor, maybe you need to talk to your spouse, maybe you talk to um, any anybody who's involved on you know accountability with your schedule or calendar. Um, but we just want to make it as affordable to you as possible. Right. But also, our hearts are um, excited <laughs> to be united together. Mm -hmm. um, next year we're looking forward to it and we'll do our best to bring our best so that this can be a, a rallying point that's catalytic can offer relationships that last a lifetime and the resources you need mm -hmm. to succeed and i think our charge yep for you would be this so that first timothy um, paul actually writes a letter and if you can imagine your mentor your youth pastor maybe your young adult ministry leader or your pastor a leader in your life, a mentor, writing you a handwritten letter. It's powerful. The power of the pen. A drop of ink, my friend Tom says, it carries power. And you can imagine Timothy reading this with great joy, with mm -hmm. expectation, with faith, with encouragement. Maybe he felt discouraged, like right. he was ready to give up. Or there, there seemed to be an undertone of a lot of people looking down on him. He was leading an influential church. And this is what Paul charged Timothy with. He said, don't let anyone look down on you because of your young. And I think of a lot of young leaders watching, right. participating in the conference. Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but what? Set an example mm -hmm. in purity, in speech, in word, in a demonstration of God's power. And let's let let's be leaders who let the King of Glory enter to be guided through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit Good. and to truly be pure-hearted leaders who prepare the way. Romans 8 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Mm -hmm. And Mike is just going to pray before we release you back to your host sites. Yeah. 
So Father God, we just thank you so much for what an honor and a joy and privilege it is to be called your child. First and foremost, God, that we would know who we are and whose we are and the mission that you've set us all on. I pray that we'd be able to do it with pure hands, pure heart, and just an amazing opportunity to lead people well. And God, I pray for the people who maybe aren't being led well or feel like they've come up against maybe their lead pastors or they feel misunderstood. God, I just pray for unity and harmony in that regard. Not a false harmony, but complete breakthrough by the time Monday even hits the calendar, God. I thank you so much for your wisdom, your knowledge, and your discernment that you constantly download to us when we seek you with our whole heart, God. Will you transform us by the renewing of our mind so that we can understand your good, perfect, and pleasing will for the ministry you've called us to, for our personal lives, for our futures, for our future families, whatever you have in store, God. I pray you bless every site, bless every person who's attended, every amen. single person behind the scenes, God. You know all, you see all, God. So we just say yes and amen to what you have. Would you set a deep fire down into our souls that we'd be able to serve those well around us, God, and to be able to open up our hearts, God, to let you love us where we're at, even when we don't love ourselves. So God, we just say yes and amen to, to the word of God, the will of God, and Lord, to 2021, that shift our minds where they need to be shifted, shift our eyes where they need to be covered, God, and just use us in mighty ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Bless you guys. We'll send you to your host sites. See you next year.